disconnecting the recovery trigger coil. Connecting the recovery drive to the coil. Use the LED, gain speed. These batteries aren't really connected to any chain. So I can use the back EMF to either light this LED or to drive a yellow uh, trigger, uh, recovery drive. The recovery drive means it, uh, it has its own circuit that recycles its own input. And that input is the back EMF, back EMF of the other two pairs of coils. Well, here I'll make the, the back EMF drive the LED again. Disconnect the trigger coil for the recovery. Do that with one hand. So that's 10.8 volts input. 710 milliamps. This is a 100 watt LED that requires a 24 volt input. Let's reconnect that again. You can hear the motor speeding up. And we can disconnect the trigger coil for the other uh, coils. So let's uh, take one of the primary drive coils. So you hear the motor slowing down. The voltage went down. And I'm going to try and reconnect it again. We're at 8 volts, 1.78 amps. Eight volts, eight point two volts, one point seven seven amps. So we have the same voltage and current with doubled output. And here's a scan of what's going on on the back EMF. So we got two volts per division. The purple line is the voltage. So it looks like it's around four volts, roughly, of input. Now when I switch to the LED, uh, it goes up to whatever whatever is required for the LED, which is 24 volts. So let's make that 
10 volts per division. And then turn off the recovery drive. Now we're at 10 volts per division, which is 24 volts. And reconnect. So two of the drive coils run on a Bedini SSG kind of modified pulse motor circuit or two, two of the drive two two of the pairs of drive coils and the back EMF is fed into a circuit like I said before that recovers all that energy from the, the back EMF and then recovers its own back EMF but it's not free energy, it's not even close, but it is a really efficient use of energy. Uh, as far as power, eh, this, this configuration is not that much, it's air core. Um, but one, one thing that is kind of cool is that I turn it off, I set it up so that it uses a hall sensor to start up. I have this little momentary on or a more momentary close switch that'll turn on the hall switch. And then I can turn it off. And I have to have it turn off because as the motor uses more voltage, uh, that hall sensor starts to get the generated energy. And at a high enough voltage, it'll just run out the hall sensor and the LED. That's, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.